So very good morning to all of you and welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's session guys, we are going to talk about the PIB news from the month of July, right? The dates are 21st and 22nd. So as you all know, parliament session is going on and uh, there is a flood of news at the PIB.gov.in. So in today's session, we are going to take 19 questions from these two days, 21st July and 22nd July. All right. And all the questions guys are very, very important for the upcoming Navad examination and all the other examination as well. All right. So let's begin with the very first question. But before we begin, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join the telegram channel. The link is provided in the description link in the description. Mein mil and if you want to ace the Navad examination this year, you can join the crash course by visiting anujindal.in. Right. So let's talk about the very first question. Identify the scheme launched in 2015 by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, which is headed by Mr. R.K. Singh and R.K. Singh's Lok Sabha constituency is ARA, which is in Bihar. Right. One second. Yes. Uh, identify the scheme launched in 2015 by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy for boosting employment opportunities in solar energy sector by creating skilled manpower and for installation, operation and maintenance of solar power projects. Now remember the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy is implementing three skill development schemes. It is implementing three skill development schemes. One is for solar sector, solar power sector, one is for hydropower sector and one is for wind power sector, right? So for solar power, we have Surya Mitra skill development program, which was launched in 2015 for boosting employment opportunities in the solar energy sector. Now this boosting of employment is being done by creating skilled manpower in this area, in the solar sector area uh, for installation, operation and maintenance of the solar power project. This program is being implemented by NICE, which is National Institute of Solar Energy. And it is a 600 hours residential skill development program. All right. Talking about the hydropower project. So for that, we have Jal Urja Mitra skill development program, which was launched to train small hydropower plant technicians for installation, operation, repair and maintenance of small hydropower projects, right? And then for wind energy projects, we have Vayu Mitra skill development program again for creating skilled and trained manpower for maintenance of the wind power projects. Now, please remember there is no need to go into the details of these schemes that is not required at all. Right. And here the question is asking about the solar power projects wala program. So therefore the correct answer is option is Surya Mitra skill development program. All right. And now let's talk about the question number two. How many LED street lights have been installed in urban local bodies and gram panchayats across India under street lightning national program? Now remember the scheme is being implemented by Ministry of Power. It is being implemented by Ministry of Power, which is again headed by Mr. R.K. Singh. Right now, before moving ahead to the answer, let's talk about this scheme. The scheme was launched in 2015 to replace conventional street lights with smart and energy efficient LED street lights across India. Right. Jo hamare conventional street light the, unko replace karna hai objective by efficient LED street lights across the country. The target, the overall target is to replace 3.5 crores conventional street lights with energy efficient LED lights, right? And expected annual cost reduction of urban local bodies is rupees 5,500 crores. Remember the scheme is being implemented by Energy Efficiency Services Limited, which is a PSU under the Ministry of Power until date. EESL has installed over 1.25 crore LED street lights in ULBs, that is urban local bodies and gram panchayats across the country. All right. So therefore the correct answer is 1.25 crores. Option D is the correct answer. I hope this is clear. And now let's move ahead to question number three. Under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, which is being implemented by Ministry of Rural Development. And I have not taken the details of PM Gram Sadak Yojana. Because for details, you can follow the playlist of Anuj Jindal government schemes. You can search for it. Under this scheme, new technologies are being used for road construction as per the guidelines on technology initiatives. Which of the following organizations developed these guidelines? So it is in news because recently a reply has been submitted by Ministry of Rural Development regarding new technologies being used in the road construction under PMGSY. Now, these guidelines were launched by National Rural Infrastructure Development Agency way back in the year 2013. And as per these guidelines, the, all the states are, are advised to propose at least 15% of the length of annual proposals using any of the new technologies. And there are various new technologies defined in these guidelines. Like for example, using of waste plastic, 
कोल्ड मिक्स टेक्नोलॉजी सेल्फ फील्ड कंक्रीट स्टेबिलाइजेशन यूजिंग सीमेंट एंड लाइन नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी एंड फुल डेप्थ रिक्लेमेशन एंड देर आर अदर न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज एज वेल विच आर बींग यूज इन द रोड कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड टिल थर्टीन जुलाई टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी टू सिंस इट्स इंसेप्शन वन लैख सेवेंटीन थाउजेंड नाइनटी फाइव किलोमीटर रोड लेंथ हैज बीन सेंक्शन फॉर कंस्ट्रक्शन यूजिंग न्यू एंड ग्रीन टेक्नोलॉजी and now let's come back to the question so therefore the correct answer is option a national rural infrastructure development agency and these guidelines were launched in the year 2013 all right moving ahead to question number 4 consider the following statements with respect to india's bioeconomy report 2022 and you have to identify the correct statement all right so let's talk about uh, this report which has been launched by ministry of science and technology which is headed by dr jitendra singh and he is also the minister of earth science and the minister of uh, minister of personnel as well right so according to this report guys remember india's bioeconomy has reached over 80 billion dollars in 2022 which is a growth of 14.1% uh, if we if we compare it with the year 2020 and this bioeconomy uh, sector is likely to touch 150 billion dollars by the year 2025 and it is expected that it will touch Up to three hundred billion dollars by the year two thousand and thirty. All right. Now, as for this report, India is among the top three in South Asia and top twelve destination across the world in the biotechnology sector, with approximately three percent share in the global biotech industry. And this industry in two thousand and twenty-one tripled their research and development spending uh, to nearly one billion dollars from three sixty million dollars in the year two thousand and twenty. And the overall impact on bioeconomy from covid vaccines was registered as 8.7 billion dollar jo covid vaccination ka impact tha wo kitna tha 8.7 billion dollars ka all right the production capacities witnessed a major increase because of covid 19 vaccination from 25 million test in 2020 to 2000 million test in 2021 so this is a whooping increment this is a you know very big achievement in this sector and during this event a biotech ignition grant call was launched by the minister this is for northeastern region theek hai this is for northeastern region so that the biotech industry can be developed in the northeastern region as well and he announced financial support of up to rupees 50 lakhs each to 25 startups and entrepreneurs from this region that is the northeastern region to develop biotech solutions all right So I hope this news is clear. And now let's come back to the question. India's bioeconomy has reached over 80 billion dollars in 2021. बिल्कुल सही बात है. No problem with this statement. Bioeconomy is likely to touch 250 billion dollars by 2025. Not 250, it's 150, right? And India is among the top three in South Asia and top ten destination for biotech in the world. This is correct. And we have to identify the correct statement, which means option uh, C. Only one and three will be the correct answer. All right. I hope, guys, this question is clear. Moving ahead to question number five, which motor company has signed an MOU with National Skill Development Corporation to train eighteen thousand students in three years, with special focus on rural areas, making them more employable? Now, can you identify this motor company? Yes, it is Toyota. It is Toyota Kirloskar Motor and Automotive Skill Development Council, with which the National Skill Development Corporation has signed this MOU. and the objective is already defined in the question it is for training is it is to provide training to 18000 student in 3 years with special focus on rural areas so that they can be made more employable and the training will be provided through an initiative of toyota which is toyota technical education program and the training will be provided in five key areas which are general technician body and paint technician service advisor sales consultants and uh, call center staff right so that is all about this news and therefore the correct answer is option b toyota is the correct answer and now let's talk about question number 6 which of the following agencies is the operating agency of fund of fund for startups now this is a scheme this is a scheme which is being implemented by ministry of commerce and industry and under this scheme there is a fund and this fund is known as fund of funds for startup right it is a 10000 crore corpus formed to support the funding needs of startup राइट तो उसके नाम से ही क्लियर है कि उसका काम क्या है सो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री विच इज हेडेड बाय मिस्टर पीयूष गोयल ही इज आल्सो द मिनिस्टर ऑफ टेक्सटाइल्स एंड द मिनिस्टर ऑफ कंज्यूमर अफेयर्स फूड एंड पब्लिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन राइट एंड ही इज आल्सो द लीडर इन राज्यसभा 
So it is a fund with a corpus of rupees ten thousand crore, which was formed to support funding need of startups. Now remember the name of two agencies. One is DPIIT, that is Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, which is the monitoring agency of this fund. Another is SIDB, which is the operating agency of this fund. Right. The total corpus is ten thousand crore, and it is for providing. It is uh, that this this much corpus is provided for fourteenth and fifteenth finance commission cycle. Based on progress of the scheme and availability of the funds, so उसको बढ़ा भी दिया जा सकता है. All right. The question is regarding the operating agency, which is SIDB. Option B is the correct answer. SIDB is headed by Mr. S. Raman. S. Raman is the chairperson, and SIDB is headquartered in Lucknow. Right. So option B is the correct answer. Now please don't get confused between operating agency and the monitoring agency. Monitoring agency is DPIIT, while the operating agency is SIDB. Question number seven. पे आ जाते हैं. Name the centre for which advisory has been issued by Ministry of Education, headed by Dharmendra Pradhan. to all the states and uts this center will be used to collect monitor correlate and analyze data related to enrollment of students progress in learning levels textbook delivery support required by teachers in school etc so you just have to name the center for which advisory has been issued by the ministry of education remember the name of the center is vidya samiksha kendra right what is the name vidya samiksha kendra and this kendra this center Will be used to collect, monitor, correlate, and analyze data related to various aspects with respect to the school students and the progress in their learning. Right? This will cover data of more than fifteen lakh schools, ninety-six lakh teacher, and twenty-six crore students. And for this, for setting up of this, these kendras, financial assistance of rupees two crore, up to rupees five crore, in fact, uh, is provided based on the number of schools. ठीक है दो करोड़ से लेके पांच करोड़ तक का फंडिंग दिया जाएगा पर स्टेट एंड यूटी बेस्ड ऑन द नंबर ऑफ स्कूल दे हैव राइट बट रिमेम्बर देर आर सिक्स स्टेट्स ठीक है फॉर विच द विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र आर ऑलरेडी बींग एस्टेब्लिश अंडर स्टार्स प्रोजेक्ट ठीक है उनको ये पैसा नहीं मिलेगा एंड दीज आर ऑफकोर्स हिमाचल प्रदेश केरला मध्य प्रदेश महाराष्ट्र ओडिशन राजस्थान वेयर द स्टार्स प्रोजेक्ट इज बींग इम्प्लीमेंटेड राइट and there is one more state for which the financial assistance will not be provided and that is gujarat because gujarat has already such system in their schools right so gujarat is also the state where this financial assistance will not be provided okay and therefore guys the correct answer is vidya samiksha kendra option c will be the correct answer moving ahead to question number 8 how much amount is given as performance linked incentive to anganwadi workers and anganwadi helpers respectively this is in news because Again, a parliamentary reply has been submit submitted by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So this is regarding the uh, performance linked linked incentive. But other things are there as well. Like at main Anganwadi centre, the Anganwadi workers are getting rupees four thousand five hundred per month. At mini Anganwadi centres, they are getting rupees three thousand five hundred per month. The Anganwadi helpers are getting two thousand two hundred and fifty per month. And talking about the performance linked linked incentive, so the Anganwadi workers are getting five hundred per month, while the Anganwadi helpers are getting rupees two hundred and fifty per month. All right. And the question is regarding the performance linked in incentive. Ah, uh, for Anganwadi workers it is five hundred, for helpers it is two fifty. So five hundred comma two fifty should be the correct answer. That is option C. All right. So I hope this question is also clear. Question number nine. पे आ जाते हैं. Ministry of Textiles, which is again headed by Mr. Piyush Goyal, is implementing Ambedkar Hastashilp Vikas Yojana to mobilize the artisans into SSGs and training of groups on various aspects <coughs> of farming and running the community business enterprises. When was this scheme launched? So you just have to, <coughs> sorry, you just have to identify the launch year. All right. So this scheme. Uh, was launched in the year 2012 for mobilizing the artisans into self help groups and the trainings are also provided to the groups on various aspects of farming and running the community business enterprises and these are some of the key features of this scheme like baseline survey and mobilization of artisans are being done design and technology upgradation for artisans human resources development direct benefit to artisans in case they are eligible for any direct benefit transfer infrastructure and technology support research and development and marketing support and services right so this much information is enough about this scheme and therefore the correct answer is option a 2012 
क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन पे आ जाते हैं विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज रिलीज अ रिपोर्ट ऑन डिजिटल बैंक अ प्रोपोजल फॉर लाइसेंसिंग एंड रेगुलेटरी रेजीम फॉर इंडिया नाउ From this report, there are only three major recommendations that we have to study, and these three major recommendations are very very important. ठीक है ये आपसे directly as a statement exam में पूछी जा सकती है First of all, this report has been released by Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog ने इसको release किया है and as per this report, these are the three major recommendations. Number वन the digital bank licenses should be the issuance of digital bank licenses should be restricted. Number वन Number two, enlistment of the licensee in a regulatory sandbox framework, which was enacted by RBI. Okay, and number three, issue of full-scale digital bank licenses based on satisfactory performance of the licensee in the regulatory sandbox and other uh, frameworks. Right? If he shows satisfactory performance, dikhayega, only then the full-scale digital bank licenses should be issued to the licensee. All right. So these three are the major recommendations. I hope this is clear. and therefore the correct answer is option a niti aayog and now let's talk about question number 11 this is a very straight forward question and from now on the questions are one mark bahut straight forward question hai jisme hame detail mein jaane ki zarurat nahi hai theek hai name the portal launch for capturing online data based on the allocation of funds that has been allocated under schedule cash sub plan from various ministries or departments on the financial physical and outcome based monitoring indicators right so the function of this portal is already provided in the question the name of the portal guys is e uthan option c is the correct answer and somewhere agar aapko kahin dikh jaye e uthan project so remember it is not a project it is a, a portal all right option c is the correct answer which country has signed an mou with india on wildlife conservation and sustainable biodiversity utilization very straight forward question and there is no need to go into the details of these mous theek hai just remember Uh, the name of the country and the objective. The objective is, is the wildlife conservation and sustainable biodiversity utilization. The country in question, guys, is Namibia. Option D is the con uh, is the correct answer. Now, can you tell me the capital of Namibia? Please write down in the comment section. Which state or UT has the highest number of recognized startups in the country among all the states and UTs? And this question is based on a reply submitted by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry in the Parliament, right? and as for that reply the highest number of recognized startups in the country among all the states and ut is from maharashtra option c is the correct answer in how many districts national food security mission wheat program has been launched ya yeah, is being implemented it is not a new program to increase the production of wheat through area expansion and productivity enhancement restoring soil fertility and productivity and enhancing farm level economy is undertaken right so how in how many district this program is being implemented and again it is uh, this question is based on reply presented by ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution right <clears throat> so this program is being implemented in 124 districts across the country option d is the correct answer how many regional trade agreements or free trade agreements have been signed by india with various countries this question was recently asked in rbi exam jo rbi grade b ka phase 2 tha usme question aaya tha एक स्टेटमेंट था एक्चुअली दिस वाज नॉट द एग्जैक्ट क्वेश्चन बट यस एक स्टेटमेंट था जिसमें एक स्टेटमेंट ये गिवन थी दैट थर्टीन फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट्स हैव बीन साइन टिल नाउ ठीक है सो द ऑप्शन इज ऑप्शन बी थर्टीन लाइक अभी यू ए से साइन हुआ था ऑस्ट्रेलिया से साइन हुआ था राइट सो ऑल इन ऑल देर आर टोटल थर्टीन रीजनल ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट्स और फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट्स हैव बिन साइन बाई द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटीन विच कंट्री जुडिशियल सर्विस कमीशन है साइन एन एमओयू विद जुडिशियल सर्विस कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया for judicial cooperation so you can see it is a very straight forward question this is only for judicial cooperation that this mou has been signed so this has been signed with maldives option a is the correct answer question number 17 very very important question i believe ye aapke exam mein aana chahiye which major port of india has become india's first landlocked major port of india so first of all what is the meaning of landlocked major port so as the name suggest the landlocked major ports are those uh, in which the Uh, you know the land ownership the land ownership is lies with the port land ownership lies with the port while the rest thing like operation ho gaya theek hai construction of terminals ho gaya all these things is vested with the private players theek hai private players ke paas hoti hai baaki sari cheeze only the land ownership lies with the port right this major port guys is jnpt option d is the correct answer jawahar lal nehru port trust 
Name the portal launched by Minister of Panchayati Raj headed by Giriraj Singh, who is also the Minister of Minister of Rural Development. Right, which encompasses all aspects of panchayat functioning, with planning, budgeting, accounting, monitoring, and asset management. So you just have to name this portal. It is e-gram Suraj. Very easy question. बहुत बार ये news में रहा है. It is the correct answer. And guys, the last question for today: What is the permitted FDI in renewable energy sector under automatic route? Can you identify the answer? बहुत बार हमने ये discuss किया है. So it is hundred percent through automatic route in the renewable energy sector because government of India has very ambitious target in this sector. So for achieving those targets, we have to do this, right? So permitted FTI in renewable energy sector, guys, is hundred percent. Option B is the correct answer. And that's it for today's session. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section, and I will see you in the next session tomorrow. This week, the session will be conducted daily. Okay, because बहुत सारी news है. So एक दिन में cover होना मुश्किल हो जाता है दो दिन की news. So I'm gonna take uh, the sessions daily from now on for this week at least, right? So thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Take care and God bless.